Okay, we're going to do one about lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. We're going to focus mainly on lions, though, and talk some about tigers and their influence. Other large cats a little bit. And what does that have to do with Europe and Eurasia? Because nowadays you think of lions as being very much something that's only in Africa and that is true but you see the iconography that they're all around and in 50 states 17 of them their flags contain lions quite an assortment of them And there's a lot of other symbology, too, that you can see it in, from low and brow beer to going into cathedrals, mosques, door knockers, things along that line, even crests over doors, and even false start door knockers and symbology. The Mycenaeans, that are one of the first cultures that are seen as showing up in Europe, and especially whenever I was a youngster, that was the first thought of it, that, you know, as soon as humanity happened, the Trojan War happened and everything, and Mycenaean blew up, and they all went, you know, uh, around the Mediterranean and became the Phoenicians. We come to find out now there's a whole lot more to that, right? This isn't at all like what kind of like was told. But then also there was people for a long time before these people, and the ancient Sumerians and the lords of Arata and the people of Upper Anatolia and around the Black Sea region and all through Eurasia that have kind of been omitted and especially in a Western world where at one time it was a definite uh, Russia versus us you know us versus them type situation and being the other one any of that heritage over there was just kind of mulled over and what used to be was not spoken of. But lions are seen in the eldest of times. I'll, I'll say this and then I'll bring it back into this. In the eldest of times in folklore and in things and times before writing and scratching on rocks and stuff Lions have been edified as being the king of beasts in a way since time immemorial. Since we had the ideas that are leading to our modern man. It could be hundreds of thousands of years that we've had this going on. Still, there are some artifacts and things that will show it to you. And we'll show some but he's always been deified in the Zodiac and this is Leo and there was even an age of Leo and that coincides with the ending of the age of Leo really because at the point that happened rapidly the lion species that were in Eurasia went away but their iconography stayed so much. And it's one thing that told people that we came out of Africa because of that situation. And then Darwin, and of course, with the monkeys and their variation that are there and stuff. And so must have been a bunch of uh, primordial soup of Africa and everything came popping out that little bottleneck, or at least most everybody did. And it seems that that's not at all what happened either. And so ideas that were built upon ideas that were built upon ideas from the 1800s have all been shattered, but that still somehow there's that flavor that I can still taste, that you can still taste to this day, and you wonder why. Well, North Africa has a different species of lion than they do Sub-Saharan. And just like many creatures of Sub-Saharan Africa are quite different in the world, just like, you know, New Zealand and stuff, there are very 
strange creatures in strange places, but there are some creatures that envelope large, large areas. And even though we don't have it that way today, at one time, they were large, large ones everywhere. Elephants' reins were much bigger. There used to be the mammoths, things that people know about well today, into North America and out. Wolves, giant dire wolves, into North America and out, into Europe and places. Times whenever it was ice sheeted over. But one easy way to see early iconography is on these shields and stuff that they, of course, always had a bird iconography. And I've shown birds and what they have to do with perpetuality and how they followed birds and, you know, the watchers. And, and they use them for divination and thought of them as being the things that took your soul to heaven and many symbologies that are pretty much slowly wiped and sm smeared out of the chalkboard where you can't even see it anymore. But other ones still stand out and some artifacts are still around and shields and things show that but one important thing right here is the lion gate that you can see and you can still make out that's exactly two lions that are going over that and lions in many effigies of elder places and stuff sometimes spilling out fire out their mouth just like a dragon would be inside of seashell iconographies in places that are far away from the sea but I'm willing to tell you that the people that did the iconography used to live among the sea and they hearkened for that and they added into other iconography. Other people see this as being the sunlight behind the lion. And that has another ideal that goes along with it too, I guess. All over Europe, you'll see it in many ways. On crests and seals. Family crests even. And... products to this day keep it going on house of Gryffindor in parks and things and out of that 50 zero right now have a lion population but out of those 50 all of them had a lion population just coming out of the last ice age. People wonder about woolly creatures. And I need to do a separate one that would kind of show this too. But you know, I'm not really like an old dinosaur kind of guy. But it's amazing how that has to go in effect. And you can see migrations. And you say, well, you know, weird people here too. Things are going on. Certain things follow certain things. And for reasons. And so, why are there woolly creatures? It's a mammoth, but he's got all that fuzz on him, you know? And usually up around the neck and everything, and that buffalo -y kind of idea and that concept. Well, a lot of people don't look at lions as seeing that, and female lions like this don't have it, but male lions have a definite giant mane to them. And that's just like that camel that I was showing to you that had the mane that's on to him. Although they don't believe the ones that lived up in Siberia and Arctic areas had any mane at all on them, but I, I don't think they can prove that. In fact, they can't prove that the males and females maybe have had manes in those, and that only in these is showing up not in females, but still in males, right? And there's a large variation between the way male lions look and females. It's a sexual dimorphism. So now, sadly today, but then again with the population of the world, every little gold dot is where you see lions. And there's even a variation on a theme there with, uh, was it Orangogo Crater has a species inside them that they've genetically figured out are totally different than each other. And there are still very small pop pockets of Barbary lions. I did a video about three years ago that somebody had seen them in these passes in the Megarib up here and somebody had seen one and it's a Barbary so it has that extra patch and the extra hair at the armpit type 
usually darker main instead of lighter and things like that. That's one thing about Orinoco uh, Gogo Crater. It had the blonde-haired lions and so on, and then the variations, so you can see that. Also, they have a variation of cheetah and, and things that, you know, like the king cheetah and all these things that people have noted over time. But let's just get on to this a little more. This is where lions used to be in ancient times, and but Barbary lions were a different species. And they are really what's shown here, regardless if they have wings on them or things. And people would think that it would be as strange as America having a panda or having a palm leaf in uh, Canada. So why would somebody use these iconographies and everything? Oh, did they used to live there? And there were people that went with a lot of that too. Genetic shows you it didn't quite work that way. But during the last ice age, everybody was squished down into the Barbary area for sure and it's really a bad idea to show America in a panda because there's really no kind of panda in Americas yeah and there really weren't palm trees in Canada but there really were lions all over Europe all over Russia and you know about Siberian tigers, and they go all the way up into the snow and everything. There used to be a snow lion, too, but the people that dominated that area took it out. It is one of the truths of that man took it all over and everything and ruined it uh, about lions, because, you know, they were definitely a uh, contest to us being able to be farmers and to actually have, you know, prosperity in the area. But there actually were lions so that would make that a little bit different and you see these statues all over and a lot of it is an iconography that goes way back through the ideas of Samson and then it was one of the things he had to do which is zodiacal and we think of Panthera Leo and you know like you see there before and this is a range that he lived in at one time even though now it's just the gold area but all of this northern type is called Barbary lions, and it's what you see in the Sumerians and so on. And I've talked recently about how really their range was cut to a point of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers that run through there. And they're not really a water crossing cat like a tiger can be in some others, right? And so Tigris goes with tigers, and if you really literally look at it, from the other side of those two rivers, the tigers are mainly over here and the tropical areas and so on, and then leading up north, but not over here, not out in the open area. And also, you know, lions are more of a open plains type thing and not so much of a jungle and have to carry around that. So when you see lions in northern ranges that have still that attitude, it shows you that that area was a lot more vegetated at earlier times and some of the steps have become steps and some of it was due to early Caucasian intervention of all these Proto-Indo-Europeans that I've been talking about in this 9,000 range to 7,000 range to 6,000 and into Sumerians and Egyptians and all these type of people recently. But it even shows into India and a lot of it is iconography and everybody thought that must be the Aryans that came into India and that have brought that iconography and while it looks like that agreeably so and there are lions that are showing up way over here in Asia in their art but as I as I showed you in uh, Sumerians in Japan that I did what two years ago they they have iconography but people have called them uh, warrior dogs or protector dogs and all these things that's supposed to be a lion and they'll even tell you, suppose it's a lion, but they don't have a real same depiction of a lion. It's almost cartoonish or weird because of descriptions. And the same thing with their dragon, right? And I talked about it there. And they're guardians of temples and on the way in. And the same thing with Lama Su of the Sumerians and this cross creature that goes with these zodiacal creatures that they've deified, like the cattle that helped to bring them into humanity. They realized that going with this cattle things helped us bring about humanity. And lions chase the bull, right? Just like in the Zodiac. 
right? And then mankind, and there he is, and he's chasing. You know, you can make stories out of it very easily because you've actually made pictures out of dots and connected the dots. And then a lot of times, looking back like this, you have to connect the dots. So very little lines over here, but the iconography shows, and the iconography, of course, going up through there. But then there was this other lion that we've talked about, and uh, it's Eurasian cave lions, and they had a North American counterpart. And again, like they showed right there, they don't necessarily have a mane, but they're definitely all furrier all over, just like the furry woolly mammoths we're looking at and things, and it would have been more appropriate looking if he would have been a little furrier all over and had a mane that looks like this. And he's actually much larger uh, version. He's 10, 15% larger if you put them up next to each other. And he is range, although it's slightly different whenever you look at it. His, his range is all of Europe, and there's even showing of being onto the Isles. I've done one recently about Doggerland and things and stuff, and there's connectives here that show you that they were able to make it up onto the different uh, steps. But it goes all across Eurasia, and it seems to be northerly bound, and so this would have been an Arctic cat. This would have been a winter-born cat, something that would have stayed in the cold of, of areas, right? Snow leopards of today, one of my favorite cats. And it goes, and it range all the way up in the Kamchatka Peninsula and always out into Ir Irkutsk. And next thing you know, it does do wrap around through all the way and into North America and the plains of North America. And North America had a lion. And recently uh, we were talking about all the animals Whenever I did one that was about camels, and I suggest you look that up. I'll try to tag it and put it in the top right-hand corner or whatever at the very end, either left or right, uh, so you can go to it. And it'll show you about camels used to be in America, and then that whole idea of a camel really is something that's more of a cold weather than a warm weather. And even though people think of them as coming from Egypt or maybe India before, yeah, and then to Egypt, no, it was bacteria before that and before that, and they were already domesticated by certain people and taken from somewhere else, and then where, where is it? Well, they were in North America, and the animals that got destroyed in it, and also the lions that went away from there, too, and this panthera species, like a saber-toothed cats, and they're gone, too, but the mammoths of North America and the mammoths of Siberia and thing all went away at the same time oh except for one little protected spot that they found that lasted about 1500 years longer than anywhere else but if you look at old cave art like La Co France and uh, the cave art that I've shown you and a lot of things I'm, I'm trying to lay off of it lately because uh, I was making connections and uh, but at the same time I think people were starting to get a little too tired of cave art and Indian looking things but amazingly we had the totem and everything that made the connection for those that have been hanging with me and I appreciate it but you can see horses in the La Co France uh, type depictions along with cattle along with a rhino along with the buffalo type creatures and again rhinos and these lion, which you would say is lionesses, and lionesses do the hunting, right? Uh, and, and, and males catch in. And how far does this go back? Well, there's this lion-headed man. There's a lion, there's a man, 35,000 years ago, or a little more. Goes back to Cro-Magnon times and first times, and they figured out now that I remember when I was a kid, they said, oh, for thousands of years, men have been walking, working with dogs. Now we've figured out these primordial dogs, like the dog type I showed you that's the Samoyed, and definitely different than the Arctic wolves and the dire wolves that are also gone too. And what happened to that other dog thing, though? It became a lot of the snout-nosed and wide-nosed dogs of the day. We can still see that there are slender-nosed dogs and wider-nosed dogs, and it's where that comes from, and then blends of things like Canaanite hounds that did come from around in the Mediterranean and the re one of the reasons they named it Canaan and people have always said well it's the canine teeth and everything yeah but I, it 
people have said for a long time it had to do with that and those are those Canaanite hounds and that that is the reason they named the teeth and it may go the other way. Regardless of that, the fact though, these early Proto-Indo-Europeans with these houses that, oh, when I was a kid you would have had a hard time saying somebody had a house like this at 2000 BC and now we have found them at 8000 BC or at least remnants of and know that we know that they were building houses and cross tier beams and stuff along the, that line and so there's this amnesia and of course we're taught that with the Bible that it only went back to a certain point and then it all faltered away well that's what they got out of the story it's what they came out of it and hopefully with a lot of my other videos I've shown you the truth of the reality and Sumerian origins and things and it goes back to a much even richer history and it doesn't be, seem to be pinned on these one people that kept screwing up but used them as an example and almost as an example not what not to do flip flopping around about God and doing these things and all of these weird things because they thought things meant things and so on and they were if the people that were tent dwellers they didn't have civilization wandering in the wood you know and and all these things it, it symbolizes a time and people don't get the idea that at least there's a portion of it that is about that it's an incredible story because it has so much in it but a lot of it is proven to be false to a, what we believe of today and people have tried to push on people today regardless of biblical things and stuff like that there's these people that looks like they're coming out of the last ice age that would have been much along this type of effect and these dogs would have helped versus the lion and so they found a few of these but that one is quite very famous and it's called zoomorphic animal shapes it's where you get a part animal part person and you think that in a modern day we don't even think about things like that but anytime you see Egypt every one of them animals have a certain personality and it goes with that and it's an ancient shamanistic thing that goes through all these people through all this time and the cherubim and how they are zodiacal and some of the last of the shamanistic beliefs and belief systems and if you look at these door knockers it's a way to get in and in a way it's a way to get in to humanity and it's a way that we came into humanity for we were the only people strong enough to have made this go away to where it's just an iconography it's sad to say, but you can't have them around your children. Think about today all the stories we hear about the people up in uh, Colorado and things that are attacked by mountain lions and stuff, and they're lucky as hell. There was a guy in, in, in the news recently that was just, he was lucky. Um, but regardless of that, you know, life can't be a zoo either, and so compromises had to be made, and while you could try to set up huge walled areas and say they're protection now but it wouldn't be for people it would be for animals in certain areas and I don't know odd things but uh, let's not go into that at all let's go more into this history of lions and you would think they wouldn't live in an arctic zone like this but back whenever caveman was what we think of as caveman it's a little more advanced as I've shown and uh, of course the tagline is goes back a little older than previously thought and ranges of lions well areas that were totally iced over until just recently were totally uncovered like this and there's some freezing in tundra but there's still some going and a large amount of creatures from small to big, from rats to bunnies to things, and, and so in, in, in an ecosystem that fell apart. And they blame it whenever man came in, and that we killed off all these things. And now that we're only left with that form of lion, and only down in Africa. But in reality, it's a different type of lion that those top people even encountered 
And yeah, man, it did have to go, I guess, if we were going to be all the people stretching across from Russia and back and forth. When people started trading and trying to go out hunting, they didn't want to be the hunted. And uh, when it be got to the point people were very good at hunting, no longer were they the hunted. Whenever they went out hunting, if something was to try to attack them, that instantly was a bad idea for them, wasn't it? And it fended off, got trapped in certain areas, and over time, especially with the land desiccating out like that it did, and separating, there weren't much left. But I know you hear stories, too, of like, in the old Greek and Roman times and how they had them and they have them on the vases and so you can see them and this idea of Hercules and Samson and so on but I think that we see that in the Gilgamesh and the people that came into Samaria and then it kind of goes before that and then it all still goes together and all somehow does go together with this concept of, of these people and this or here he is shown as redhead and Leo and its attachment to lions and this master of the beasts that has been portrayed like the Mycenaean things and the gate of the lions there are symbols of this master of the beasts and I've shown you in ancient Egypt and the very start of that in the Gib el Arek knife how he shows him holding two lions and the master of the beasts and this Gilgamesh iconography and stuff that leads on through to the later Sumerians and then Akkadians and through the whole area has it going on and all the way up through northern Europe but uh, there were lions there too in areas of Greece there were lions till not too long ago while they would grab lions and take them to Rome and do things like uh, you know the gladiators and so on a lot of those were the Barbary lions and some of those lions were using dog attacking and things that they had and for shows Supposedly it wasn't done as much as people would like to think, but just as there is dragons, as there is, there was lions, and you think it's gone back to mythology, but people have this iconography all over, and it's in some way a gargoyle or a watcher or an overlooker or something that's meant to be kept into mind. But they had, up until 400s, 300s they had lions into Greece and Upper Anatolia in areas that were still found and hunted locally and so lions have been a part of Europe for as long or as longer than Europe has been Europe and the only reason they're not now there today is that man had become the master of beasts. Like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. Peace.